Hello everyone, this is Showtime Moment 2. In this video we will cover something new. In 1970s and 80s, a serious war took place in the South of African continent. They were all connected by participation of Republic of South Africa, and they are known as South African Border Wars. We will focus on the Angolan Civil War. Angola gained independence from Portugal in 1975. Several factions then turned on each other, with the communist MPLA receiving weapons and advisors from USSR and other countries of the bloc, plus a direct aid from Cuba, which sent its combat units to join the fight. A faction named UNITA, which declared itself anti-communist, received aid mostly from Republic of South Africa. The communist MPLA was eventually recognized as the official government of Angola, but the fighting nevertheless continued. Fast forward to September 1985. The government armed forces known as FAPLA and their Cuban allies launched an offensive against UNITA-controlled territory. However, their supply lines were cut, and they were forced to supply their forward troops by helicopters. They were using Soviet Mi-8s and export version Mi-17s for that purpose, while Mi-25s, export version of the Mi-24, were escorting them. UNITA turned to their South African allies for help. South African Air Force at the time operated several types of aircraft such as Mirage F-1, Mirage 3, Buccaneer and Canberra. They also operated locally produced Impala, a model based on Italian Aramaki MB-326. It was a jet trainer and like many jet trainers they had a secondary light attack capability. South Africa also produced the Mark II version of Impala which was a dedicated light attack aircraft with rear cockpit removed. When a decision was made to try to stop Angolan government and Cuban forces to supply their units with helicopters, Impala was chosen for the job. A light attack aircraft isn't necessarily the most logical choice. The airplane was not designed for this and pilots were only trained for air to ground. Additionally, the enemy had MiG-21 and MiG-23 fighters. In case of an intercept, Impalas could have had difficulties escaping them. However, their ability to fly at extremely low altitude was found suitable for penetration of Angolan airspace without being discovered by radar systems. Their relatively low airspeed was actually an advantage for attacking helicopters. Some of you will probably say that there's nothing special about this, airplanes are superior to helicopters and they can easily shoot them down, right? Not really. Especially with an airplane that doesn't have a radar or modern avionics with HUD symbology to help the pilots. In DCS world we don't have Impala, so we are approximated with Aramaki MV339. This is a more recent model developed from MV326, but they share some similarities and capabilities. Impala pilots practiced intercepting helicopters with South African Pumas. They were operating from Rundu airfield in modern day Namibia. There they were sitting on alert, ready to take off as soon as enemy helicopters were spotted by recon aircraft or ground units. One of the things that helped them was the fact that Angolan helicopters usually followed landmarks such as rivers. On September 27, 1985, Leon Mayer and Pine PNR were on cockpit standby when intelligence officer reported that enemy helicopters were finally located. Two pilots quickly took off in their Impalas and flew to the initial point at about 100 feet above the ground. PNR was the first one to spot the helicopter, so he took the lead. He initially missed his approach to the Mi-25 and came a little further away than planned. Fearing that Cuban mix located in nearby Cuito Guanavale might intervene, he rushed things little and opened fire from a longer range than optimal. He caused damage, but the helicopters were still flying.
DNR quickly found himself alongside the damaged Mi-25, but pulled up and over and positioned himself for another attack. This time, his gunfire was fatal for the Mi-25. Still worrying about mix, PNR quickly returned to low altitude. Leon Mayer missed on his first approach, but he was more successful on the second. The two Impalas then returned to base before mix could intervene. Two days later, signal was given one more time for Impalas to scramble from room to airfield. Once again, transport Mi-8s were escorted by Mi-25s and the Impala soon spotted them. The lead pair attacked the gunships. One Impala was damaged by the Heinz gun, but damage wasn't critical. Both Mi-25s crashed into the ground.
the lead Barrowian powers now focus their attention on the transports. One was soon shut down, but the other one managed to evade fire and escape. The second Impala pair arrived and spotted the escaping helicopter. They missed on first few tries but eventually Mi-17 landed and was strafed and destroyed by Impalas. The leader of the first flight spotted a pair of MiG-23s, but Impalas managed to get away flying home at extremely low altitude. This operation was a success for the South African Air Force. They shot down six helicopters in two days and helped to hold the FAPLA and Cuban forces offensive. MiG-25s were, however, still used later in the war, causing serious losses among rebel UNITA forces. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to press the like button if you did. This is a great help for the channel. Support the channel on Patreon if you're able to and keep watching Showtime 112.